Welcome back to The Breakfast Show. It is time for our weekly Financial Freedom Minutes. And over the past year or so, we've talked about how to invest your money in everything from property to gold bars. But the one thing we get asked a lot is, how good is an investment in unit trust? Mm. Uh, is your money really safe in the large pool of investors? Yeah, so this morning we thought we'd answer some of your questions. And of course, joining us to help us with that is our resident financial coach, Mr. Yap Ming Hui. Welcome back to the show, Mr. Yap. Good morning. Uh, good morning, fellow Malaysians. You're now watching Financial Freedom Minutes with Yap Ming Hui. Now, today I want to talk about how do we optimize the return of your unit trust investment. Now, some people think that they can just invest into unit trust and expect the fund to make money for them. Correct? The answer is no. Why is it no? Because whatever investment fund that you invest into, they'll be facing a lot of changes in the environment. There could be a change of fund manager. It could be a change of different strategy when they actually invest in a resource investment. So we should actually think about that. When we actually invest the money, we want to make money from the resource investment. But if you don't properly manage it, at the end of the day, you may end up losing money. So today, I will set, share with you three key steps that you can actually do to help you to manage and to optimize whatever investment into unit trust. <coughs> now, number one step that I will share with you today is to do proper filing and reporting. When you invest into unit trust investment, you have got different companies, unit trust fund, and then different companies will send you different statement uh, at a different part of timing. Uh, a lot of times it will come from different format as well. So to keep your information uh, recording, at least you need to file up all these statements. Okay? Nowadays, I see two, day, uh, two years ago, there's one company called uh, Independent Unit Trust Platform, which introduced uh, the kind of investment of unit trust that allow you to invest into more than 15 unit trust company and consolidate all the unit trust investment statement into one statement for you. So you can consider using company like that. Uh, example, for example, company will be like IFAS, okay, which can help you to consolidate your reporting. But if you do not have such a facilities, then what I can share with you is a template that I'm going to share with you that you can see on the next slide. Whereby this is sample unit trust monitoring statement that you can use. Whereby you can see there's a second column there. There's a fund name, okay, and then where's the date that you actually invest the amount of money. What is the initial investment that you invest, say, for example, 10,000? And what are the total u units that you have now when you review? Say today is actually 26th of July. After maybe six months of investing, how many units you have? And next column, we talk about the fund price as at 26th of July today. Then when you calculate it, you get the current value that you have. So you will know but from the 10,000 investment that you have, whether you're making money or you're making losses at the next column, and you can actually find out uh, analyzed returns from there. So this is the template that you can go to my website, www.yapminghui.com, to download if you want to have a copy to use it to monitor your unit trust investment. You know? Just remember the old strategy of like buying unit trust, holding it, and then forgetting about whatever you invested that does not work anymore. Just take, take note of that. So I would suggest you uh, then to look at the second step. Second step, talk about we need to monitor whatever return, you know, performance of the unit trust that we have. How do we actually monitor the return performance? At the very least, we need to know whether the unit trust investment that you've done, uh, whether it makes money or not. Okay? So at the very minimum requirement, we need to know that the return that you, you, you generate from the unit trust investment, whether it makes more money than the fixed deposit interest. Because fixed deposit interest give you 3% or 3.2% without any risk. Okay, so if you, your return is like 1% or 2%, then I think you can forget about the unit trust fund because putting the money in fixed deposit is better. Okay, the second uh, criteria you can consider when you just compare the performance of the unit trust investment is compare the investment to the same category of fund uh, using the table like Lipper's tables, research, uh, Morningstar this research table available in the major newspaper like the Star, the Age, and etc. So what do you do is that, say for example, you invest into a bond fund. This bond fund gives you, say, 4% annualized return. And you, what you can do is that you can compare to all the bond fund, maybe 20 old bond fund in Malaysia, average return maybe is 7%. Then if you compare 4% that you're getting, and then the average bond fund is getting 7%, then 
and you know that you are not doing even as good as the average, that's when show that your fund may not be doing as well compared to the average. So if you have an equity fund, okay, it's doing maybe like 10 percent, whereby the average category of the equity fund under the leaper table is doing 6 percent, then you know that your fund is performing better than the average. So this is how you tell whether your fund is doing better than the average of the other ca same category. Next, I would suggest you to look at that. When you actually invest money, you should actually consider uh, this, this fund to hold it at least for three years. Because if you invest for six months, you see the funds losing money, you may be selling your funds too early before you give it a chance for the fund to actually make money. Now, third step that I want to talk about here is to take action. Whatever you do reporting, you do filing, and you do monitoring, you're supposed to take some action. So what are the actions that you can take? Here I want to share three. Number one is to do rebalancing. And I would suggest you to do rebalancing every six months. What do I mean by doing rebalancing? Rebalancing meaning that if you have invested in five funds and you've got one fund to achieve uh, making a good profit, then I would suggest you to take some pro profit, sell the, some of the units to take the profit, and buy into some of the other funds inside your portfolio, which is actually uh, selling at a lower price. Then you make sure that you always sell high and buy low, which is also buy low, sell high. Now, second step you can consider to do is to do restructuring every year, which means to say if you have a portfolio of five funds, and then you have one fund, say a China fund, which seems to be performing, uh, lagging behind compared to other China fund in the actually Malaysia market, then what you can consider to do is to replace that China fund with a China fund from another company. So this is what I mean by restructuring, by re replacing some of the underperformer with the better performing kind of funds. And I suggest you to do it every one year. Last but not least is to prepare for funding. Normally when we invest for unit trust, we actually invest for a purpose. Whether it's for our children's university education, for example, if your children is ready to go to university, say in two years' time, I would suggest you start to liquidate some of your unit trust profit, you know, some of your unit trust investment, to prepare for the cash, so that when the time comes for the time for you to spend the money for university education fee, you have the money to actually fund the funding, so that you will not subject your actually unit trust investment to all kind of volatility, whereby actually will deplete your money by the time you need to use the money. So always remember, we must not invest and then hold and forget about investment. You must actually do something about it. Remember, every one of us can achieve financial freedom. So talk to an independent financial advisor today to optimize the money that you have. So, all back to you, Thanks, Joanne. Mr. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I have lots of questions for you. A lot you. of questions. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Because uh, from my basic understanding yes. of unit trust, right, mm. I would give my money to a fund manager. Right? Yes. yes. And my right. fund manager does yes. all this work for me. Right. Not and true. Then, and then and have faith in them, and then let them actually do what they have. Yeah. Yeah. But the trouble is that if you were to say choose a fund, mm. okay, based on your own research, you find that this fund seems to be doing very well for the past five years. Yeah. No, and it's happened to be not only doing well, but it's actually top one or top three right. fund in the same category. Mm. But guess what? This fund manager that you have, say A, B, C fund in a, a company. Uh, is managed by one particular human being, you know, say, mm -hmm. called a fund manager. Yeah. But this fund manager actually is an employee of the company. Right. Mm -hmm. So he has been doing well for the past three years or past five years, but he may resign. Yeah. Yeah. No? So maybe six months after you invested the money, mm. he resigned. He left the company A and go to another company, a new manager coming in to manage the fund. Right. But this guy may not have the same experience, same competency with this guy. But mm. you, if you do not monitor this portfolio, you do not uh, maybe read Sorry. the prospectus and understand the news, you don't really know what actually happened to the fund. Right. So that's how, why important for you to get to know what's happened to the market. Right, okay. right. Also, a lot of, um, uh, the other question a lot of people ask us is, mm. what do you look for in mm. a unit trust? Mm. Okay, I think very importantly, we need to know uh, how many types of unit trust fund mm. are there. Mm. Whether there are three major types. Right. One is actually it's money market, mm -hmm. which is very much for cash position. This is yeah. quite close to FD. Yeah. Then you've got another thing, a bond. Yeah. You know, it's like IOU kind of thing, yeah. which give you uh, income. Yeah. You know, because they pay coupon, yeah. then they give you income, maybe like 4 or 6% every mm -hmm. year. And you have another equity kind of fund, which right. is mainly investing into share market. Mm -hmm. So this one, you're looking at at least 8 
or ten percent kind of return. Mm. So depending on your risk appetite yeah. and the target return, you will invest into a different kind of mutual fund. Mm. So it this is very ba- very basic. Is it advisable to go spread your your your, your money across all three, mm. um, like you know the, the money market, mm. the bond, and also the equity market? Uh, not not exactly. Mm. This is an example when I mentioned when you prepare your your uh, fund, mm. let's say for the children education funding, then you need to use the money two years down the road. Right. So this money that you have, I think at best, you can keep into maybe money market fund, right. which is quite close to fixed deposit right. return, or maybe at most you put half of it into the bond, right. mm. you know, so that it will not subject to any volatility yeah. because you need the money. Right. But if you say that I'm going to retire 15 years later, mm. 20 years later, then I would suggest you to you can actually afford to put all of this money in equities. into equities. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, so that even though there's some crash in between, but there's going to be a boom as well, yeah. then you can actually expect a higher return right. over the long run. That's why you, Depending you, on your objective. There's this thing that we call, you mentioned, which is the dollar cost averaging. Yes. Now, that is basically, as my understanding, is you buy consistently and mm. so that when you buy, uh, you know, it averages out because yes. there'll be the low period and you get more units and yes. it balances out. But yeah. what is the... Do, frequency in between buys, mm. what would you suggest? Like? I, I would suggest because most of Malaysians, mm. Uh, mm. Uh, we are not like uh, uh, British or things like that, mm. we get our pay on a monthly basis. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. No so weekly, right. the moment right. we get the monthly basis, I think it's so important for you to actually make a deduction on the monthly basis. Then. Okay. 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 In fact, right. the better way to do it even is to uh, to automate this process yeah. right. so that this process of deduction of this money will be right. done uh, right. to invest into this unit trust right. automatically without you noticing But it. would it make a difference, let's say, if to do it once every two weeks? Mm. Would it make a difference versus saying do mm. it once a month? I, I would say uh, with that kind of uh, this small difference of times, mm. uh, mm. it normally would not make, make too much difference. difference right? mm. okay. Yes. Okay. So okay. I think mm. once a month will be something quite ideal for For most most Malaysians. All right, so okay, one final question before we go. Mm. So from what you've just told us, you know, it seems that you can't really just sit back and watch your unit unit trust grow. Mm. So would it be advisable for a first-time investor Mm. to invest in unit trust? I I would say that actually for first-time investor, whether you're a first-time investor or Mm. five times or ten-time investor, the idea is to uh, forget about the idea of invest in the unit trust and then just forget about it right. and let right. manage right. your job. It, it will never work. Mm. You know? mm. uh, everybody uh, owe to themselves uh, some responsibility to really understand what are different types of funds, what is your ob- investment objective, yeah. and choose the right fund and then monitor the performance. Mm. At least you should, the very least you should know is whether the fund you invested is making money, it's performing or not. Performing yeah. or not. Yeah. And you'll be surprised, I don't know, Joanne and Hansen, there are some people that actually talk to me that they don't even know what What's happened to the unit trust? Just leave it totally to the fund manager, right. leave it to the agent. Right. And that is no no for your unit trust investment. Right. It's time to go call yeah. my agent today. So thank you very much, <laughs> Mr. Yap, yeah, you for that. Be too trusting these days. Yeah, right? I guess like anything else in life, you yeah. need to make an effort. Definitely. So anyway, thank you, Mr. Yap. Thank you. And we'll see you next okay. week. Yeah, see you next week.